Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Toy Guys Talking. Joining me once again, Carson Metaxas from 3D Joe's. And also joining for this three way dance, it's Jay from Action Figure Adventure, Nintendo Quest. How you doing? Good evening, my friends. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk Joe's. And Carson, you got some huge news. Fill us in on what's going on with Yo, Joe. the art of G.I. Joe, which is one of the most, honestly, precious pieces in my collection, the art of G.I. Joe. And I'm, I'm so excited that more people are going to get a chance to own this. I appreciate it, man. I, I think you're partially to blame for the soft cover selling out. Uh, <laughs> when I sent those books to you back in the day, you know, I think you would roll out the book reviews on a Saturday morning, if I remember correctly. And I would get up and I would get my little YouTube digest of new videos through my subscriptions. And I'd say, oh, Michael Mercy reviewed video three. That's really sweet. And then bam, sales, 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 like Saturday, Sunday, maybe into Monday, uh, sales would roll in. And so, man, I just want you to know, like, you really do you really do move the needle. And and so I appreciate you helping amplify, get the message out there, spread the good news about our efforts at 3D Joe's to document this stuff. So for those that don't know, Collecting the Art of G.I. Joe is a book series. We did it in six incremental chapters because candidly, honestly, at the beginning of it, we didn't know if there'd be demand for it. And so we did volume one, which was 1982, 1983, 78 pages. That's the size limit for the saddle stitch format, which is what we use for the soft covers. And over the course of three and a half years, we did volumes one through volume six, everything from 1982 to 1994. And uh, made my, <laughs> all of them. Ice got all of them right there. So, uh, uh, so yeah, we, we it's, made like it yeah it's, it's like a hug. It's like a hug from hard. Carson. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You could just sleep under it like a weight blanket. You know what I mean? And they smell awesome. Oh. They do because they're offset lithograph, and what you're smelling is ink, my friend. That yeah. CMYK, uh, that's that real four color offset lithograph print. So, we spared no expense Amazing. on those for those that have held them in their hands. Um, the covers are this AccuFoil. You start with a foil paper and then you lay white down on parts that you want to pop out. And then you do the four colors on top of that. And so some stuff goes to the front, some stuff goes to the back. It's really cool. Very happy with those. You can see how the figures pop off and then the mountain goes to the back. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we, we had a ton of fun with that. They look really good in person. They're very nice quality. And we sold out after, I think it was a year and a half after the Kickstarter. We made a thousand copies. We sold about half that through the Kickstarter. And then we had another 500. And over the course of a year and a half, we sold out. And that was a couple of years ago. And, you know, 3D Joe's is not gone anywhere. So people are still coming to the site and still seeing them and seeing that they're sold out. So I think it was just that there was pent up demand. There was people that have rediscovered G.I. Joe, you know, with the classified line being really popular. Retro mm -hmm. was at Walmart. Now they're doing O-rings again. I just feel like G.I. Joe's had a huge resurgence over the last mm -hmm. couple of years. Thank God, because it was kind of dormant for a few years there. And uh, so I think G.I. Joe's really popular. The soft covers were sold out. And man, I just struck while the iron was hot with this omnibus hardcover. So there's basically that whole set cost 200 bucks because each one of those volumes cost me 10 grand to produce. And the slip case cost me $17,000 to, to produce. So I had $77,000 worth of print costs in that soft cover series. This new book is actually cheaper than that because it's a hardcover. Everything's self-contained in one volume. It's a larger format. So it's 12 and a half inches wide by 13 inches tall. It's gonna. It, we were starting out at 480 pages, but we already blew through all the stretch goals. So we're adding 80 double, double gatefold spreads that fold open. Uh, so we're up to 640 pages. The thing is going to be massive. Like that is five pounds and 460 pages. This thing's going to be probably nine or 10 pounds and 640 pages. It's going to be ridiculously big. Oh, and uh, I mean, the amazing thing is we put this up on Saturday. We blew through the stretch goals by Saturday night, man. Awesome. I mean, to be working on something for years and feeling in your heart that this is what people want, this is what people need, and like it's going to be amazing. And then you put it out there. We've got 1,100 people on this Kickstarter now. I've never sold to more than 420 through Kickstarter. Wow. It's just, I'm really humbled and blown away and just like very happy. I feel very validated because I'm just like a super nerd that spends way too much time on this stuff. And for people to like really see it and love it and reward it and throw their money on it, it's amazing. So that's the but update. It's, it's not just for the product. I mean, it's the book is amazing, but it's a thank you. It's a thank you for the ultimate G.I. Joe archive. 3D Joe's is the ultimate G.I. Joe website, and I'm always harking on about toy artistry. And you have the online G.I. Joe art museum. It's all easy to navigate, easy to find by year. It's all there, super high quality scans, 
they're all you know your your own uh, pieces from your own collection. And, I always uh, get I always get really like I always tense up a little bit when somebody tells me something like that. And thank you for saying that. We've certainly put a tremendous amount of effort into it over the last decade. We started it in 2012. We're coming up on 10 years right now. Um, it's been a lot of work, but I also always want to put an asterisk by that and say, you know, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. Uh, Yojo.com was there for 20 years, you know, before 3D Joe's. Mark Belomo's books were my Bible when I started recollecting in uh, 2007 when I saw 25th on the shelves. So there's there's other resources out there that are amazing as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, the Yojo thing was crowdsourced. And so they were getting content from everywhere. So yeah, it's a little patchy. Like some some assets are great, some assets- Like some of the wikis, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, what I wanted to do with 3D Joe's was narrow the focus because I only do 82 to 94 and do it really high quality assets that everything's scanned by me or photographed by me and edited yeah. by me and some friends. Um, so I do have some help with the website there. But yeah, I just want to kind of raise the bar from, a, um, I went to school for design. I was an animator. Um, graphic designer. And so I just wanted to kind of raise the bar on the assets. And then that grew into doing books, uh, doing posters first and then doing books. The posters. I got to throw the posters out there too. Jay's got a couple in his collection too that I haven't yeah, seen. Right. You can't yeah. you can see the corner of the my flag. absolute favorite playset of all time. That is the flag. And I see the I dragon was lucky fly. enough. I was lucky enough to visit 3D Joe's headquarters and Carson. I bought every single one you had. Remember every different print yep. you had? I bought them all. And these guys were so amazing, awesome. Mike. They they drove from Canada to North Carolina and interviewed for what did we interview for? Like six or seven hours, Jay. Oh, dude, it was. It seemed like it seemed I got like I got to like hold. 3 a.m. I, I got to hold. And remember, I wasn't leaving your place until until you let me hold the vamp. Uh, Hector yeah. Garrido original print. I got to hold that in my hand. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. It was, fun. It, it was fun seeing you respect I, it. Remember, yeah. I'm like, goosebumps. Took a picture, took a picture. <laughs> and uh, so Carson took a picture of me, and that was my social media pick for almost a year, I think, was me holding yeah. that vamp art. Like, yeah. oh, so great. You know, I, but, I remember uh, when yeah. I went up to Queens and got that, and then I went and stayed with my friend in Brooklyn. He's a painter, and we took a photo of me with the vamp in his painting studio, and the level of excitement on my face in that photo was like the exact same as the level of excitement on your face yeah. in your photo. So I think that's just, that's naturally how you respond to a Garrido painting in real life. You know what I mean? Oh, there it's, 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 like Michael would say, toy artistry, it's the best in the business, hands down. I think those explosions, and I even love the digital later on. Mm -hmm. I just think those backgrounds are just incredible. He he changed it. He changed everything. He he came two years before Transformers. Mm -hmm. He-Man was uh, 82, but they didn't have, well, they had some box art, amazing box art on the, uh, on the vehicles and stuff. But Hector Garrido was the one that made every single, in addition to Larry Hama, I mean, there's a lot of people to thank. Yeah. Uh, but but you know, Hector Grito's art was what grabbed me. Like, who are these guys? They look so intense. They're they're yeah. not smiling and going, "Yeah, we're the good guys." They yeah. just look like all yeah. business. Um, and for for viewers out there who are wondering uh, where they can see Jay's visit to 3D Joe's, that's actually on Action Figure Adventure. It's on Amazon Prime Video. So, yeah, wherever you may be, check it out on there, and you can actually see season one. Uh, yeah. Do you know what do you know what episode it is, Jay, for the the 3D Joe's headquarters visit by any chance? I think it's four or five. I think it okay. splits into two because we were there a while, and you <laughs> play a pretty big role in what happens uh, with nice. the auction stuff. So yeah, yeah I yeah. think it's in two episodes. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah, but so these guys drove down from Canada. I think y'all got y'all got there at night. Sun was already down. And I think we oh, went from like yeah. 8 p.m. to like 3 a.m. or something. And then the, I think you guys went and got a hotel room and then you drove back the whole next day. I was like, man, that is just amazing. It's really, really humbling to uh, have TV producers take an interest in you and want to drive a whole day to shoot with you one night. And they're not out. they're not your typical TV producers, though. Right. They're not. <laughs> they're, no, they're, they're fans. They're, they're, they're a special breed. Toys, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, G GI Joe is still my favorite thing to collect. And, and Carson has, uh, there was two different buildings and, and the, the, the main building where we interviewed Carson, I would just, you know, I'm trying to be professional, but I'm looking around. There's like <laughs> silver pads, grand slam here, here, and here. There's like autographs by Larry Hama. GI Joe. I'm just like, it's like overload. Man. <laughs> it's like, 
Okay, I'm just going to sit down here. Let Rob do it. <laughs> oh, man, I miss that office, brother. I got to get this one set up properly. That office was and my the, happy place. Where's the Falcon cutout, man? I was expecting to see that. Uh, so he's upstairs, so I set up my oh, photo studio okay. finally. Yeah, so Falcon keeps me company while I'm doing photography for 3D Joe's. So. You're a you're a fan of Lieutenant Falcon. I didn't. Uh, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Never, <laughs> never heard. <laughs> you guys, did you guys see the cover for the comic last last like three weeks ago, four weeks ago now? No, you haven't seen no. this. Okay, I'm gonna make this quick because I've already talked about this elsewhere. If you, if you want the whole story, go Do to it, Talking man. Joe. It's a podcast where they talk about the comic book. And uh, Mark and Tim have been doing this for a long time, and they had me on to talk about this issue because it's a spotlight on Lieutenant Falcon issue by Larry Hama. And it's got on the variant cover, it's got Lieutenant Falcon running with his shotgun and cover girl off to the side. Well, it was actually based on a cosplay photo of me of you. wearing my dad's stuff dressed up like Lieutenant Falcon because me and John Royal struck up a friendship. I traded him a set of books. He gave me a Falcon commission sketch, but, and he had such good feedback to that on social media that he pitched to his editor, hey, can we make this a full-blown cover? And then it yeah. became the cover. It's just a crazy story. If you want the whole thing, it's on the uh, Talking Joe podcast. You should wear the, the handkerchief all the time that should be your gimmick <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, and have an antenna in your hoodie or something <laughs> nice. Nice. i do Go wear ahead. my dad's uh i do wear my dad's de Presso oh. lee bear special forces ring everywhere that's uh, awesome so man that's my tribute to my dad that's awesome um so you're a huge fan of the figure i love the figure too like when the oh, yeah. when i first got the figure it was <clears throat> magnificent what do you think of falcon in the gi joe movie though i don't think oh, we've he's... ever talked about what they did to him in the movie it's a travesty, man. I mean, he's okay. the most he's the most disrespectful, unreliable, you know. See, I wasn't sure if you loved the figure so much, you'd go, yeah, no, he's great. <laughs> no, and I don't hate Don Johnson. You know, Miami Vice was cool, whatever. It's great, man. It was, it was the script, man. The script. It was the way they wrote him. He, he was in dereliction of duty at every turn. You know what I mean? Yeah. Bringing girls onto the base and just, he was just a scumbag. So yeah, it's not, it's a little bit of a sore topic for me, <laughs> yeah. but it, it didn't, it didn't dim my love for Falcon, man, because really my Falcon is Larry Hama's Falcon. It's the file card. Right. Um, we didn't get a lot of Falcon in the comic book way back in the eighties. Um, so, shame. you know, it was my dad, man. It was my dad personified, you know, in plastic. So literally I grew up in Southern Pines right on the other side of Fort Bragg and on the other side of Fort Bragg is Fayetteville. And so that's where Lieutenant Falcon was born and he was stationed at Fort Bragg. My dad was stationed at Fort Bragg. He was executive officer of fifth group. My dad was the real executive officer of fifth group. Crazy. Like yeah, you can't, you just awesome. can't, you wow. can't write that, you know, it, it might be the biggest missed opportunity in all of real American hero. Cause you had yep. Duke come out cool awesome leader flint come out i i suspect that flint was supposed to be the new leader because i heard from a warrant officer saying we don't take orders from first sergeants we remind first sergeants they take orders from us so wow. i think maybe flint was supposed to be the new leader and the cartoon guys are just like you know what just just keep it duke and gi joe is a different thing and then hawk came out and i thought when i saw falcon in 87 before i saw the movie i thought well this is the new guy this yeah. is you know d d uh Hawk is, you know, polishing a chair somewhere with his butt right. and Duke, Duke is probably promoted or taking it easy, getting a little older. So this is the new field commander, isn't he? Lieutenant Falcon. And uh, I thought he was going to be the new face going forward for the next like three years, kind of like how, mm -hmm. you know, Duke and Flint had been. But uh, they, they just, you know, he blink and you missed them, kind of. It's, it's a real shame. It's it's absolutely backed up by the packaging artwork. So if you look at volume seven, they created uh, several key images for 1987 with Falcon featured very prominently. So everything from the 1987 catalog to that direct mail um, poster, you know, where he's like front and center with the American flag holding it. And there's like a melee of 87 figures back there. He's featured prominently. Um, so I, I think you're right. In 1982, it was Grunt. Grunt was the face of the brand. 1984, yeah. it was Duke. Duke was the face of the brand. I don't think Flint was meant to replace Duke because Duke was still on shelves in 85, right? Um, but I do think by the time 87 came around that they were thinking Falcon was going to be the face of the brand, and that's why he got so much prominence on so many uh, pieces. But I think the movie did tank it for him. I mean, the movie, yeah. first of all, Transformers movie didn't do well. Tr kids were traumatized by Optimus dying. Yeah. The, the G.I. Joe movie kind of got shelved and went straight to VHS, right? It didn't even show in theaters, and it, it just didn't do well. But I don't know. So maybe that took Falcon down with it. It's, it's a shame. How excited are you for a classified Falcon, though? It's coming, dude. I know it's coming. Yeah. 
I have no doubt in my It'll mind. Be so good. It'll happen. It's it's got to happen. I've got a a really good experience with a, a friend of mine, Ray Murphy from Ireland, who worked. He said he worked for this thing on two months and made me this custom Lieutenant Falcon with completely like I think he used tampos for for the camo pattern but like when the camo bends around and like hits a pocket he would put a slit in and then he would turn the angle of it and like wrap it up around like give it this whole feeling of uh you know like they're different pieces of fabric putting the the pants in the pocket together just brilliant man this guy this guy works so hard on it it's a fantastic falcon so no no matter what hasbro does i'm sure it's going to be great but it's not going to top what ray murphy did for me Awesome. Uh, Art of 3D, Joe. I often say plastic finds a way for people who stress about not being able to find something in stores. It's a huge cause of anxiety for toy collectors. I can't find it. Where is it? It's it's scalpers or it just didn't ship. I mean, here in Canada, Jay can attest to this, Origins, we're getting killed. Like, what what are we getting here? Like six Origins figures and that's it? Like there's just all all of them, Orco and Stinkor. We're not getting any of them here. They're they're never getting stores other than yeah. like Fisto and uh, Evil Lynn. Just a few of them, and they keep coming over and over again. Anyway, I keep saying plastic finds a way. You'll get it eventually. Yeah. Uh, paper finds a way. So for <laughs> folks that uh, weren't able to get a hold of this, because I I hear from people from time to time watching you know the the videos going, hey, where can I get these? They're sold out. I always tell them, go get some posters. <laughs> you know, right. the posters are amazing. I've seen some posters at Jay's place of the uh, the card art all collected on the poster. I've never mm-hmm. seen those in person. They look really cool on the website. They look mind-blowing in person. I, I, I wonder, the one thing I wondered was, are they too small? No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yes, they're smaller than actual card art, but yeah. all there on a big full poster recommend all those the individual figures on there too but paper has found a way and the uh, hardcover is coming out so for the folks who couldn't get this beautiful box that holds all the foils uh it'll be hardcover like a lot of those books on amazon the toy books Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. you can find on amazon but uh fill the folks in on what you're going to get extra so it's not just a complete reissue with a different cover you're actually going to get a few extra new things in the hardcover yeah, so we knew that we were going to be reissuing uh, as soon as we started to sell out of the soft covers. You know, my buddy Chad Huckle and I have been working on this. Like I said, we started in 2013, 2014, and it's seven years later. Um, when we started, we were good, but we weren't great, right? In terms of the photography and the image editing. So we did the first two volumes. And we just kind of took a technological leap and a skill set leap by doing this hundreds of hours. Each book was 400 to 500 worth of man hours worth of effort uh, in Photoshop doing image restoration. And so by the time we got to volume three, I really feel like we had hit our stride and the, the assets were top quality. So when we started to sell out of the soft covers, we kind of conferred on it. We were like, are we really going to do this? We're going to, okay, we're going to reshoot everything, rescan all the vehicle boxes and re-edit all of it. And so we started working on that two years ago. We've re-edited all of 1982 through 1986 at this point, and he's gone into 87, 88 and done a little bit more touch-up work, but we didn't have to reshoot those because we had been shooting with new technology, so just basically polishing up some of the Photoshop work on those. So you're going to get Volumes 1 and 2 completely remastered. In addition to that, over the last two years, I've traveled around to meet with all of the original, not all of them, but a a significant portion of the original creators. So Kirk Pazigian, who was a brand manager and eventually vice president of Boys Toys. And Law. He was yeah, also law. law. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. And Ron Rudat, who designed every figure from 1982 to 1986, and a significant and, amount of figures from 87 and 88. And um, he was Leatherneck. <laughs> it, it, yeah, the, the face portrait for the painting is Ron Rudat. So if you know what Leatherneck looks like, you know what Ron looked like, at least in the 80s. Um, right. Bill Merkline is a, he was a contract sculptor who did 70 figures for G.I. Joe, a real American hero. And he worked on other toy lines and he did holograms like dude, National Geographic, the Eagle that was on their big reveal of holograms. That was Bill Merkline. The Visa Dove that's on millions and millions of credit cards. That was a Bill Merkline sculpt. This guy's amazing. Um, And and he wasn't just batting cleanup for Ron Rudad. He, I looked at the list of some of the ones he sculpted and they're some of my favorites. Yeah, no, no, no. He, he basically, he worked from 1984 
Rakondo was his first commission from Hasbro. Rikondo. And he worked all the way up to 1990 figures. You know, so he's probably sculpting those in 1989, late 1989. So he worked with Hasbro from 1983, starting with Rakondo, all the way up through 1989, creating figures that were released in 1990. And he did 70 over the whole run. And some mm-hmm. of those, there's actually, this is a segue into what I've been working on with 3D Joe's that's just an yeah. aside from the book, but we'll, we'll get back to the book. Um, if you want to learn more about Bill Merkline, go to 3djoes.com look under the pre-production tab and then look at creator profiles and you'll see Bill Morkline's whole portfolio. You can learn all 70 figures that he worked on. You can see a twins cool, head sculpt man. they didn't use. You can see two head sculpts for Rocky Balboa that they didn't use. You can see an alternate head sculpt for Tunnel Rat who was based on Larry Hama. There's just a, it's a gold mine of information there under the pre-production tab. Go check it out. Um, so anyway, while I've been traveling around to see Ron Rudak, Kurt Bazigian, um, Bill Merkline, who else did I see? Doug Hart who was the internal painter who took over as Hasbro kind of broke up with the packaging agency after 20 years of wonderful partnership. I think they were just pinching pennies by the late eighties. GI Joe high water mark was 86 by, by 89. They were selling half of what they were selling in 86. So they were starting to cut expenditures in, in many ways. One of those ways was bring all the packaging stuff in house. You had people internal at Hasbro that were salivating at the mouth to get their teeth into this brand and make it their own. And so Doug Hart was one of those. He had been painting My Little Pony, working on a bunch of other brands for Hasbro, and he proved himself in 1987 as being capable of doing that G.I. Joe package art. So he did the 1987 catalog art. He did several of the Battle Force 2000 carded figures. They used Earl Norum. Uh, they used Doug Hart. They awesome. still were using Garrido. So 88, 89 is a mix of different painters. That's why some of those packages look a little different if you really scrutinize them. Yeah. Um, I was surprised and, to learn that Earl did some, Earl Norm did some work because he's he's mainly he known for He-Man. But uh, I'll, I'll rattle off, I'll rattle it off really quickly. If you want to hear, there was a significant yeah. volume of work from Earl Norum on G.I. Joe in 1987, 1988. Uh, if you go to 3 djoescom and then go under the print tab and then go rollover books overview, and then go to Marvel books, you'll see in 1987 Operation Raging River and Operation Starfight. Both of those are completely painted by Earl Norum and they're beautiful. Um, You'll also see the the 1988 accessory pack, which has uh, Road Pig and Voltar and a couple others, Astro Viper in the foreground. And then Mm -hmm. way up on a mountain, you've got Hardball and Spearhead Max and a couple other guys. That's an Earl Norum painting and it's absolutely beautiful. I got my hands on the Kodachrome, which I can scan at like 1200 DPI and then really blow that up. And so I think if you you look at the soft cover volumes uh, for the introduction to 1988, that's the key image. It's gorgeous. It's Earl Norum drawing all these 1988 uh, characters. It's great. Uh, If you look at the package art, Earl Norum did Budo, Hydra Viper, Road Pig, and we think Charbroil. So si- significant amount of packaging coming from Earl Norm as well. Um, so anyway, that I, and I learned most of that by sitting down with Doug Hart for seven hours and going through the books together and just talking about, okay, what did you do? What did Hector do? What did Earl do? What did other people do? There's, there's other contributors. There was one guy I couldn't remember the name of, but we know that that's consistently that guy. So I'm still trying to nail down that name. Um, it's, it's all... <laughs> it's all just research, you know, it's, it's all just, you know, archeological digging. It's, it's talking to people. It's trying to piece things together. It's comparing different sources. And uh, so it's exciting. Another person that I interviewed significantly was Ed Morrill, uh, who ran the packaging company from 1969 to 1989 that worked with Hasbro. He worked for three different companies throughout the course of that period of time for his career, he would merge. And then he partnered with some other people and blah, blah, blah. The entire time GI Joe was his client. So when a merger happened or when he moved or whatever, G.I. Joe came with him, right? So he was the one that did the Adventure Team rebranding for Toy Fair in 1970. He did the G.I. Joe Real American Hero branding. He also did Super Joe there in 68, 69. Uh, he did the Real American Hero, the, the explosion background, the hiring of Hector Garrido and the managing of Hector Garrido, and the generation of thumbnail sketches that Hector Garrido worked from. Most people don't even know that Hector Garrido worked for an art director that gave him thumbnail sketches. And so they're all going to know that now because I've done extensive interviews with Ed Morrill. There is a creator profile that's in the revision stages with him right now that should be you know, available to the public in the next couple of weeks. And that'll be a big part of the research that's included in the Omnibus hardcover. Um, who else did I interview? So, so basically over the last couple of years, it was like, yeah, we're gonna reprint those six volumes, which are awesome, but we're gonna go out and talk to these people and we're gonna film the interviews. And that what that's evolved into is a much bigger and better book 
and a free Blu-ray disc that's going to be included in the back of the book that has, I won't say an uncut version of these interviews because I've got over 40 hours of interviews. We're not going to put all that on a Blu-ray, but I will, I'm an editor, video editor by trade. So I'll be editing, editing that down. And when there's uh, like cinematic or thematic similarities between interviews, I'll weave people together to have them all tell the story of, you know, what was Toy Fair like, for example. So it's going to be a hardcover book with everything that you've already got, plus a ton of new interviews, a ton of new assets, and uh, and a Blu-ray with all the interviews so you can hear it straight from the creators. You might have That's enough cool. footage for uh, 3D Joe's <laughs> The Movie one day. So I, I want to give an allegory to people who might have this one. And then they hear that a hardcover is coming out. Because sometimes what happens with, you know, as a toy collector, something comes out the following year or two years later. And, oh, man, like it, it seems better. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent the money on this and that. There are certain things that that happens with, like, especially these days when it, something comes out and then it feels like two years or a year later, a better paint job. It's a reissue, but with a better paint job or a better... I think what's going to happen here, this is how I personally feel. To me, this is 1982, a 1982 G.I. Joe figure. The hardcover is going to be a 1983 G.I. <laughs> Joe figure. I, yeah. I would not <laughs> hold an 82 short fuse and an 83 short fuse and go, oh, man. I would yeah. go, awesome. I've got the original 82. It's special. Yep. And I got the 83 who can do more. It's just like the first yeah. one, but it can do more. Yep. So I would never consider the hardcover redundant. I would consider it its own thing that can do more with the the remat. Oh man, that's huge! The remastered uh, yep. uh, first uh, two issues plus all the interviews and stuff. In my heart, those soft covers are always going to be special because that paved the path for us to get to where we are right now. And not only that, I think they're, you know, in terms of a physical product, they're unique enough that they're going to stand on their own. Because if you look at those AccuFoil soft covers, you're not going to get AccuFoils on this hardcover, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so those those six uh, foil soft covers there are truly unique and special. And that double box slip case, man, where it slides out and has a little oh. edge and you pull them out, like that's a cool experience. It's so amazing. the hard cover is going to be absolutely beautiful it's going to be wider it's going to be taller it's going to have more pages it's going to have remastered art it's going to have additional interviews but there's still something about the soft covers that's always going to be unique and special absolutely i really like how you've done this it to me it doesn't feel like an aw man either way like these are incredibly special the Aki foils are so beautiful and they're just they're mesmerizing they're they're kind of like the visionaries holograms like right wow it's a gimmick but, right it's like an 80s 90s comic book gimmick style cover it's beautiful man it's like a, you know the they had a chromium at valiant or holograms at marvel or die yeah. cut you know it, but it was that's fun thing. but that's not to say Oh, you miss the good one. Like this is the no, this no. is the you know the follow up. No, like I I think that people who didn't get a chance to get the first one, I I don't think you're going to feel like you're missing out on anything. Like if you get an eighty three Joe, you don't really feel like oh man, I didn't get the eighty two. Hey, it's cool, it's fine. Like the eighty three one does everything the eighty two one did and more, but the eighty two one is still very very sentimentally special. So right. I, I like how, how I like that you waited first. for the hardcover as the follow up. You always love your first, man. So even if you had straight arms first and the swivel arms were clearly an improvement, you're always going to love that first. You, <laughs> you know? got to get them both. The case, That's the key. <laughs> got to get them both. So if this is 82 and the hardcover is 83, what is your up and down 85? It's going to be <laughs> looking what's forward. Ball, what's my ball joint neck? Hey, um, maybe, maybe we should focus on the Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll say this, man. I am not going into this with any ideas that I will go into this again. I want this, and I've said this many times to many people, I want this omnibus hardcover to be my swan song to the art of G.I. Joe. I, I didn't intend to you know, create the soft covers and then create a hardcover five years later. That was not the intent. I wasn't sure if we were going to find an audience with the soft covers, and I clearly couldn't do seventy-seven thousand dollars worth of printing, you know, right out of the gate. I had to build that audience slowly, and it has. If you look at the last six uh, Kickstarters that successfully funded, you know, it went from like twenty thousand to whatever. The last one was forty-seven, and here we are at one hundred fifty. It's insane. But that was a slow build, you know, that that wouldn't have happened out of the gate. But so we didn't we didn't want, just want to reprint something that we didn't feel like the 82 to 85 stuff was up to par with what we created after that. And so creating the Omnibus hardcover, it was just 
because we're perfectionists and we wanted to do it better and we didn't want to reprint. And but I promise I'm not going to keep doing that to you guys. <laughs> we're not. Oh man, we're Valor gonna... versus Venom, Art of Valor versus Venom. We well, need that... it. Okay, so that's a different topic. Like my <laughs> might I expand to different times? Maybe I, I won't say any, that's out of the realm of consideration, <laughs> but probably how about, not. How you about know, those super cheap rubbery Toys R Us? reissues yeah no nah, <laughs> no nah, not the art of the new sculpt with the t crotch explore, exploration that they did in the early 90s or, any, oh. or early 2000s <laughs> um but anyway my intent is not to do something after the omnibus hardcover that represents all this material i want the omnibus hardcover to be it the swan song to the art of gi joe because we have other things that we're working on and there's other places that i want to dedicate my time and so one of those huge efforts for 2022 is doing pre-production properly on 3d joes so if you go to 3djoes.com and then go to the pre-production tab you'll see several of the uh, creator profiles that we've already created there are Bill Merklein, Guy Cassidy, Kirk Bazigian, uh, Ron Rudat. They all have significant creator profiles with dozens, if not hundreds, of images. Um, the word for the just the the uh, word count for the Ed Morrill one that I'm working on right now. We just pulled that into Microsoft Word to kind of do a spell check and also to kick it over to Ed so he could turn on track changes and make some edits before we go live with that one. It was 11 pages worth of single spaced content wow. just on on one web page coupled with around 100 photographs and scans and that kind of thing. It's a massive amount of information, and that's just one person's page. And it's, it feels really good to talk to these guys, capture their stories, capture their work, and present it to the whole community, where the whole community, for the most part, man, I'd say 90, 95% of the community don't know who Ed Morrill is. He oversaw the design of the G.I. Joe brand in 1982, that he oversaw the brand refresh in 1986 with the uh, 3D expanded logo and the digital digital burst in the background, the horizontal lines. All that stuff happened through CSL and M, Coleman, LaPuma, Siegel, and Morrill. His name's on the, the placard, right? He's the one of four partners for that company. G.I. Joe mm -hmm. was his client. Um, so it's exciting to talk to these guys, capture their stories, preserve it, you know, for Joe fans to find free of charge in perpetuity. This stuff is going to be on the internet forever. And you know add I mean? free too. And add, add free. free too, so that it's mobile friendly. That's a huge motivation for me. It has been for a decade now since I've been building 3D Joes. We don't want ads on the site. We don't want to junk it up. And so what we do is we sell posters and we sell books. So anyway, uh, if you go to the pre-production tab and then go to the creator profiles, that's where you should start. Ton of good content there. Yeah, we'll see, see Larry on there too, Larry Homa. Yeah, and there's only a few videos on Larry's page. I'd like to flesh his out more, but I also wanted to go ahead and get those up because a couple of those are panels that I did at a, at a convention and that kind He's of thing. He's elusive. He is, <laughs> yeah. guys. He's okay. I uh, I want to give you guys spoilers about something else we're working on, but I'm gonna hold off. All right. Um, but the other ah. thing that we're doing, if you start going, if you go to pre-production and then go to figures, go to 1982 and go to 1983. All those pages are new for 22. All of those pages have been put up this year, and they're all credit to Jody Classified and me teaming up to bring you guys pre-production for free. I mean, These it's, it's amazing. It's Ron Rudak concept sketches. It's color studies. It's presentation paintings. It's uh, unadorned artwork from the actual package paintings. It's amazing stuff. It's beautiful wow. and it's free of charge. And the only reason that this is happening is because when Yojo got frozen around 2018, there was a lot of guys that were contributing to that and they had basically been cut off by the company that bought it. And it yeah. was, a, it was a shame and they have passion. And it's like, okay, well, what are you going to do next? And we should talk because I never wanted like Yojo and 3D Joe's to be competitors or anything like that. And I never framed it that way when I talked to the community. And so I got together with the guys and we're like, well, what do we think is the best route forward when we discussed several options and what we landed on was just, we're going to keep going with 3D Joe's and, and just Give you an injection just boost you and like really try to try to blow that out and so what i'm doing with the joe declassified guys primarily is this pre-production section first and it'll take us all of 22 and probably in 2023 to do it but you can see the 82 and 83 pages that we've already done this year and it's still january so mm -hmm. it's going to be an exciting time at 3d joe's there's going to be lots of free content coming to you guys uh focused around pre-production and uh, i'm very excited for that continued work the pre-production um concept art on the figures is incredible like ace with a mustache in a much more flight suit uh less space suit more flight suit looking thing other than the the space helmet yeah. looks fantastic yeah, yeah that's the thing that's that's the thing that happens sometimes when you look at the pre-production you're like 
oh man <laughs> like <laughs> right. why, why did they get rid of the pockets on his thighs you know but if you, if you keep scrubbing down then you see some line art like where they got rid of the pockets and they changed the boots and made it more of a streamlined space suit you know what i mean so you yeah. can see you could see and sometimes it's like they changed it for the better and sometimes maybe they didn't if you go to uh 1983 destro look at the horrible <laughs> destro head sculpt in that turnaround this is like this a skull is, uh, yeah, it does. With like the nose is gone, right? So it's just a yeah. hole for them. It's it's kind of weird. But that's a figure sculpt sheet. That's what Ron Rudat would have created for the sculptor to use as a reference when they were sculpting. And they would actually use like they would take measurements off of this and compare it to the two up that they were sculpting. So this was drawn at a two up scale. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, this is amazing looking at some of my favorite original Joes, like the yep. uh, concept art for the laser infantryman, which became Flash. Yep. And it's it's pretty far off from what we got. Right. It's fascinating. Yeah, the early sketches, especially, um, if you go to Figures 1982 and then go to Scarlet, uh, look how different she is in that first sketch. She's got like this Princess Leia kind of hair wrapping around with like the crown kind of thing. Oh, yeah. It's, like it's Endor lot, Leia. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot different. So it's it's interesting. Um, I did I get a date off of that one? It was dated 1981, signed by Ron Rudat. To me, it looks like it says 1025 under it. But if I'm not certain, I don't put it in the captions. But it's then the drawing. This would have been before Return of the Jedi too. Uh, Scarlet with the kind of Leia braid going around her. Oh, it would have. Okay. Yeah, because the Return of the Jedi was 83. There you go. Yeah. So he wasn't influenced by that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. So with Scarlet, you get a really early drawing. We call that ideation, uh, sketching. And so you get a really early drawing and then you get a revised drawing that's much closer to what we got. You get all these annotations on the revised Details. drawing to tell you exactly what those things are supposed to be on her. You know, if you go to Plastique. If you go to the 1982 Cobra, this is probably one of my favorite discoveries here. Um, 1982 Cobra Pre-Pro, he's labeled Commando or Trooper. Um, it's a grenade launcher that's on his chest. And so clearly on his left arm, those are grenade rounds. But oh, on his cool. on his right arm is piano wire. This dude had, you know, you use that to strangle people, cut off the carotid arteries and kill them. Whoa. Right? So he's a silent. <laughs> the Cobra Trooper is actually like a silent assassin. He's ready to get I in there. never knew what that was. Most people that's didn't. Gnarly. I, I didn't wow. until I saw that drawing and read those annotations. Like, that's piano wire. He's going to, he, he's going <laughs> to, wow. you know, he's going to start attacking you with the grenade launcher. Then he's going to run up, you know, and maybe hit you with the sniper rifle or whatever. Wow. And then if he doesn't kill you by the time he gets to you, he's choking you out with piano wire. It's crazy. Well, you know, you know, the Joes are going to get those fingers up and uh, a <laughs> <Yeah. you know. laughs> little block action. We yeah. need so some of these as uh, action figures, kind of like how Mattel did for masters, the Lords of power stuff in yeah. the origins line. We need some pre-production Joe yeah stuff man that would be phenomenal i can agree with that I, I i would love to see you know hasbro's having a resurgence of the o-ring line and so far all we've seen is taking the old sculpts and reproducing them and sometimes changing colors like i really like the sunbow duke and cobra commander that they just showed so i'm excited about that but i'd also still like to see them do something new with that format um, so if they did revised figures that look like pre-production, that's a cool idea. Or how about awesome. how about just some brand new figures altogether, some new characters, new concepts, maybe people from the cartoons or comics that we never got in that toy form. Those would be interesting. There's a lot mm -hmm. they can do with it. I hope they don't just reproduce what they've already done, but we'll see. And a big thing on these uh, pre-production figure pages is you get a, a beautiful shot of just the Hector Garrido card art. Yeah. So yeah. it's the, it's not on the with the bubble and with yeah. the logo. It's just the pure, unedited, unadulterated <laughs> Hector yeah. Garrido beautiful artwork. Yeah. So the word awesome. I the word Fill I use for that, up with that, you know, because I talk about this stuff way too much, right? But the uh, the word that I use for that is unadorned. It's unadorned. Not not covered with anything. It's just in the nude, you know? Yeah. And it's, uh, it's beautiful, man. It's, it's striking. Uh, most of those have been digitized from the original Kodachromes, which are the high resolution transparencies that they would use when they were going between the packaging agent agency and Hasbro. And then Hasbro would duplicate them and send them out for licensing purposes. And they would also create photo prints based off of those. So you could have high resolution transparencies and then usually at the exact same scale, you can have photo prints from, and from, 82 to 85 or so they were sizable they were you know three inches wide by five inches tall and then 86 and forward they got smaller you know so it's like an inch and a half two inches by like maybe three inches but you scan that in at 1200 dpi 
and that's the results you'll see on 3d joe's man it's just the yeah. level of detail you can get there is incredible like for the duke artwork for example i was able to zoom in on that and confirm 100 percent that hector garrido painted duke with green eyes for diana davis because she wanted to know <laughs> so it's, wow. it's awesome the level of detail you can get into so um snake eyes had a mustache he did. Early Snake Eyes looked horrible. <laughs> he looked like Zorro. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. And that's the kind of stuff, man, I've, I've really enjoyed putting these pages together. A lot of this con content is coming from the guys at Joe Declassified. And uh, one of them in particular has been working with me a lot on the writing, the captions, making sure I'm getting things right. And we're actually creating an extensive glossary together and a 26-step process that shows the development of the action figure every step of the way. So those are going to be huge resources that you guys will all be able to enjoy, again, free and ad free on. 3d joe's um wow. but as we're working through these figure pages it's so much fun to discover things like snake eyes was gonna look really really different at first with the open face mask and a big mustache and um you can see that they actually <laughs> they actually made accessory revisions on them there too from the first version to the second version so that you know yeah. you didn't have the knife and the grenade at first this is just a couple of saggy pockets you know so it's cool <laughs> it's cool to see and then like the explosives that are on his thigh that everybody knows snake eyes is having those like dynamite on his left thigh that was a there was originally two pockets on his left thigh and the dynamite was a separate accessory that he was going to be able to to handle so it's cool to see how these things evolved from version to version now that you've put this out there mm -hmm. We could be seeing figures of these, like original concept, because they Star Wars has done that, right? Concept Boba Fett oh, yeah. and concept this and that. Concept Snake Eyes with the Zorro mask and the mustache. Yeah. Especially with the customizers, you know, the, the guys that Joe Customs, people that do this every day that just are always making amazing customs. I fully anticipate 2022 to be the year that we start to see a lot more pre-production based customs. Mm -hmm. Oh, I sure hope so. Oh, that would be so wicked. Yeah. So you guys, if you do that, anybody that's watching, if you create customs that are based on pre-production, tag us and we'll share that stuff. Like that would be awesome for the community, I think. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the uh, the Omnibus and the Kickstarter is in the video description there, check it out, pick it up. It is awesome. Also pick up some posters from 3D Joe's. I can't recommend them enough. I love my USS flag poster. You do not need a USS flag box. It is not necessary. It, for me, and I would imagine it, maybe for a lot of people out there, Carson's poster is better because it's mint. We love mint. It's huge. It's the exact same size as the box, and, and it's not deep, right? It's not going to be a big, empty box taking up a giant amount of space. If you don't have a flag, then just hang it on a wall, and it kind of feels like you have a piece of the flag because before I got the Defiant, I got one of your Defiant posters, popped it on a wall, I've had a lot of people tell me that that owning the posters or owning the books has freed them for the compulsion to own all those boxes or own all those figures. And if there's one thing I can do for the community to to free them from, you know, the compulsion to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on these things, I'm I'm proud of that. <laughs> you know? And the prices are incredible. A lot of bang for your buck on uh, 3D Joe's. But in addition to the book, you've you've got some other things in the uh, works too. We do. Uh, so. <sighs> It's like, I don't want to steal the shine of the Omnibus, but honestly, man, there's something else coming. And, you know, back the Omnibus and you throw $100 at the book and you're going to get actually a lot of free stuff. We're, we're getting ready to reveal a bunch of uh, bonus items with it. So you're going to get a tremendous value. It's You're not just getting a book for 100 bucks now. We're talking about doing a... Um, slipcase wrap that you can peel off and make it as a poster on the wall oh, that'll cool. remove it'll remove the logo on the front you'll only have the logo that's centered along the spine so you'll have this and let me let me do the math on it really quick it's 12 and a half 12 and a half two so that's 25 27 and then four inches for the flaps that go inside so 31 35 it's gonna be 35 inches wide and 13 inches tall and it's that collage of art that features almost every artist that contributed to the brand from 1982 to 1994 so that'll be a really cool poster that's also like a wraparound kind of dust jacket and then we're going to include a series well this is we're all working on it i'm talking to the printer and blah 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 but where we're thinking we're going with this is 12 and a half by 13 inch prints of the top 10 painted pieces from 1982 to 1994. The collaborative backers that are, that have paid at that $150 level, yes. they're going to be the ones to vote on it. I'm going to put a bunch of images in front of them and I'm going to put a poll out there and what they decide are the top 10 images. That's going to be the print set that comes with your book. Um, we're Mustache talking snake eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, well, 
<laughs> number one, he's not painted artwork, so he's out Aww. of that, We got to limit the scope of this thing, and the scope of the thing is just painted artwork. Um, what else are we talking about? I'm, I'm talking with the printer tomorrow to see if the hardcover where, where you have the bound uh, sewn ins insert, the binding, right? I want one of those fabric bookmarks that comes around and you can drop oh, it in because because you're talking oh, about a 640 page book you're going to need yeah. a bookmark some so of the e-man books have that so i want a sexy red white and blue bookmark oh, that's fabric. That'd be awesome. you know? that's that's the goal um so i'm working on that uh, i'm looking at doing a uh, foil stamped embossing for the logo on the cover as well oh, as on cool. the spine um so that'll be a good upgrade so basically the kickstarter has gone bonkers and so instead of ordering 2000 i'm probably going to be able to up the order to 3000 which brings down the cost per unit a, a little bit and i'm mm -hmm. trying to pay that money forward to the backers by giving them these additional upgrades to the book and freebies to include with every order so that's that's the big thing with the omnibus but man right behind it is well before you we, before you we get into that i just want to add one last thing about okay. how how to use these. So some of us who are, are lucky enough to have large collections like a wall of stuff or two walls of stuff or maybe even a room of stuff. How do you use this stuff? I really like to enjoy my collection while reading through books like yours. Turn off the screen, turn off the laptop, turn off mm -hmm. the phone and just sit there and kick it old school. And old school was paper. It was comics. Yep. It was catalogs. And that's what these are. These are beautiful, slick, well-produced catalogs. Mm -hmm. So I like to just sit there and be immersed in the room while going through your art because, awesome. you know, it's it's nice to sit there and just look. But, you know, after after months or years, it's a little something extra to be able to enjoy it. So that's how I think a lot of people can enjoy this, too. It's, you know, mm -hmm. don't just sit in your kitchen and read it on your kitchen table, but sit next to your collection and just the full immersive experience of you've got the actual physical representation in plastic around you. And then you've got the artwork, you know, by the greats, the legends, and also the interviews by the creative yeah, the stories, the stories. Yeah. That's the full experience. You, you need both of those to have the full experience. Absolutely, man. I, I'm with you 100%. We're, we're maybe the last generation that is going to prefer to flip through things than just be stuck on a tablet, you know? Um, oh, God, very, I hope not. <laughs> very few people uh, of the 1,100 backers that we have right now, only a few have asked, are you going to have digital versions of this, right? Because I'm not really a print guy anymore. I'm backing you, but I'd like to have a digital. I've literally yeah. only had a couple people say that. And it's cool. I'm not judging them. But I think we're the last generation that's really going to be like a print first generation. I've been a comic book reader since G.I. Joe turned me on at six years old, right? Yeah. I don't. I don't read digital comics. I've tried. I've gone into comiXology. I per purchased a ton. And I just don't sit there on my tablet and read them, man. I'd rather flip through a trade paperback or a hardcover or a floppy smell copy. Smell them. Yes, yeah, smell the ink on See the See the ads. Yeah. The old bonkers ads. Yeah. Yep. So um, anyway, while I was doing the interviews for this book, sit-down interviews are cool. And, and we did those. But I'm a video, I'm a videographer, editor, animator by trade, right? And what I've been doing with a lot of my clients is more documentarian filmmaking, where I'm a, you're a fly on the wall, you're going along with them, and you're experiencing something with them. They're doing something while you're while you're talking to them and pulling sound bites from them. They're engaged with something, and so I was thinking, what can I do with these guys that'll get them up out of their chairs and doing something and, and lively, and I had an idea when I was 10 years old for a GI Joe that I submitted to Hasbro and they rejected it and they sent it back to me with a very nice rejection letter. So I still had physical copies of this. So I, I decided to send it to Ron Rudat and Kirk Bazigian and said, how would you feel about helping me bring this character to life? And I filmed the whole process and they were like, sure, that sounds great. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm going to take my dream as a 10 year old kid and bring it to yeah. life and film the whole thing. Never so, give up. <laughs> never, no surrender. This is a 33-year-old dream. Never give up. No surrender, man. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you how far along we are now. Ron Rudat did the design. Kirk Pizigian did the, the management of that design process, meaning he marked it up, came up with some revisions. And I did that with him and we filmed that. And then we kicked that back to Ron and then Ron revised it and he kicked it to Kirk, et cetera, et cetera. So we got through the whole design process, which was several rounds of back and forth, you know, from ideation to colors, to finished line art, to color studies, to presentation art, back and forth between these two. And then we went over to Ed Morrill, who's the packaging guy. And he came up with four different sketches for how you might lay this character out on the package. 
and uh, and we finalized on one of those. And then we kicked it over to Doug Hart, who's the packaging painter, and he created an all new package painting. And then we went to Bill Merkline's house. I lived in his upstairs for two weeks while he oh. sculpted this thing from a naked buck, which is like the armature that they would build him on, to a fully sculpted figure. I lived in his oh. house and filmed the whole thing. Um, then we went to Larry cool. Hama, and Larry Hama wrote the dossier for this what? thing. What? Yeah! <laughs> what is right? And then I went back to Ed Morrill and worked with Ed Morrill and his son, Sean, and we developed the branding for all new packaging, and it's an all new line. It's called Operation Recall. It's coming. Oh my goodness. So we've got the sculpted figure and I worked with a couple of more modernized guys to take Ron's accessory drawings. So the, the one kind of non analog thing that I did was the accessory design. And I worked with a 3d modeler, Adam, and I worked with a 3d kind of printing engineer, Mike, and all this stuff is documented. Like, you know, me, it's documented from A to Z, man. So this is going to be, this is going to be big, man. And this is coming right behind the omnibus. And I kind of feel bad, like hitting everybody with the omnibus and then hitting them with operation recall. But I needed to do the, I needed to do the omnibus for me and for 3d Joe's. And so all of our work didn't just die on the vine. But once I did this one figure with these guys, every one of them was sad when we got done with the project, everyone was like, this was so much fun. It's a kind of a shame that it has to end. And I was like, you know what? Oh I've, my goodness. I've got 4,500 subscribers to 3D Joe's. I've had success with Kickstarter in the past. What if I do a Kickstarter? I came up with the Operation Recall branding because in the military, you can recall people that have served previously in times of great need. The country can call you back to service. And I basically, yeah. I basically recalled all these old veterans of the that's toy wars so awesome. and had them come back and serve one more tour. So that's where I'm coming up with the branding for this Dude. thing. They've all agreed to do as many figures as you guys will fund. So that we're is such an unbelievable amount of respect and love and appreciation. I'm I'm getting a little verklempt yeah. to to the to the people who created all these things that we love to give them one more mission. There is no reason that these guys shouldn't be creating stuff for us now. They all have the skill set, and I've got the proof with this one figure and the accessories that we've come up with. It is, it's right there with a real American hero. It's, it's compatible. It's comparable. It's beautiful. They've still got it. They've still got the game, and there's no reason they shouldn't be playing. You know what I mean? Oh, so basically, awesome. I've paid for this whole thing out of pocket. I don't ask people to work for free. So the, the artists that have worked on this project, I've paid them out of pocket just because I thought it was going to be a chapter in this book. I, I wholeheartedly thought that's all this was going to be, was that I was going to document from start to finish creating an action figure for one chapter. And, it, and by the time we got done with Rotello, we're still working on them a little bit. I'm getting paint masters right now. I can actually pull out the sculpt and show you. Do you guys want to see it? Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. yeah. All right, cool, I was about cool. to ask you. If you <laughs> so, tell so this, this Pelican case has been all over the country. Um, oh, yeah. So I literally just got casts made of this guy. And uh, I just sent him off to the guy that's going to be making the paint masters. He's amazing. Uh, painter, customizer, Matthew LaCroix is working on those. Um, so all I'm going to show you tonight is the original sculpt by Bill Merkline and the resin uh print that i had made you know you make a mold and then you make a resin casting from it uh two of these just went off to the painter to get the paint masters made one of those will go to the factory in china uh to use as reference and the other one will be used for marketing purposes this is my boy right here uh... he's, he's got the exact same joints he's got the swivel so i've got these little posts in here that are longer than you know traditional posts but this is uh this is all sculpted wow. by bill merkline that's awesome. This is the, it's this an O-ring. Oh, yeah. That, well, so I've got some like piano wire in there right now. <laughs> but anyway, that's look at incredible, this. That's incredible, Carson. Wow. Oh, uh, one more Joe. This one a, more original Joe. Gun. He's a communications officer. He's a radio teletype operator. So he's got a flare gun right there. Uh, you know, some pockets on the back. He's got the rear pockets. He's got the side pockets. He's got the seam, <sighs> the seam going down the middle. He's got... Uh, explosive are these are smoke grenades up top. He's got an infrared sensor right here. He's got the handkerchief. He's got the grenades right here. He's got a, a bald head and a gnarly beard, you know, because that's what guys do when they go bald. They compensate with the beard. Is that is that yeah. a two up? <laughs> this is a two up. Yeah, this is exactly how they made them back in the day. A two up buck. And so we started with a a naked, uh, you know, sculpture, uh, articulated sculpture, 
and sculpted on top of that. And that's where I filmed with them for two weeks. So this is a resin copy. That's why it's all one color. Uh, I do have the original sculpt here where you can see the two different types of plumber seal epoxy that he used because that's what he sculpted with. It also, so he's a radio teletype operator that comes with this big communications backpack. And in the backpack, a drone plugs into it. So you got a modern day drone, but mm -hmm. he's also got <laughs> this concept. Keep in mind, guys, this was a concept I came up with when I was 10 years old. It didn't include a drone, but <laughs> it included a carrier pigeon. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. So his, his feet are separate. He's got a backpack, you know, for carrying his messages. He's got a little helmet on there. Oh my god, that is wicked! It's, to dude. it's totally ridiculous, man. I mean, it's like it's perfect GI Joe, though, right? So because the pyramid of darkness would have no effect on this guy. Exactly, because <laughs> and, and so yeah. my modern my modern analogies for like why is Rotello so important? He's got a radio tel teletype communications backpack. Those actually will stand up to EMP blasts, right? So if China hits hits us with an electromagnetic pulse the uh, radio communications officer is actually still very vital. So this is the original sculpt by Bill Merkline. And so you can see the the blue and pink is the original kind of armature, what they call a buck. You know, he's got yeah. like a, a communications keypad here on this arm. And this camera is not wow. great. Not oh, great that's... For this. You guys will see all this in much more detail down the road. So beautiful. It's been the project of a lifetime, man. Because not, not only was I just, you know, riding around and, uh, filming with these guys and getting their stories, we were creating something in the process, you know? So that's a better look at the flare gun there. Really Incredible, nice dude. Yep. Incredible. So, Good for you. Good yeah, for you. I mean, because I know Yo, <laughs> it's just wild. Thank you. <laughs> just wild and, wild and wacky ideas, man. And, you know, if you go into it, like just with genuine enthusiasm, a lot of times if people, you know, meet you, see you, get to know you, you know, break bread with you, get a feel for you and think that you're just like a real genuine person, you can win them over with your enthusiasm for an idea. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so the yeah. fact that, cause I gave Ron and Kirk an out. I was like, if you guys don't like the radio teletype operator with a carrier pigeon idea, we, we don't <laughs> so have to do great. that. We could do something totally different. And they were like, no, it's cool. Let's do it. So, well, it's, it's right up their alley. I mean, it, shipwreck came with a parrot. Exactly, right? man. Can, can Spearhead came with a guy? bobcat. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine this guy in the cartoon with his little uh, carrier pigeon, man? It would have been a great, you know, uh, we got the episode where Polly got blown up really big. Like, can you imagine what they would have done with the carrier pigeon? And carrier pigeons actually have a lot more military relevance. They were used in the military in World War One and World War II uh, pretty heavily. So there's, it, it just should have been in G.I. Joe. I always felt that as a kid. Like, why don't they have a radio teletype operator with a carrier pigeon? So I'm working on it. I'm I'm so pumped for that because, you know, I, I love these new O-ring figures or O-ring style figures that are coming out from from different uh, fans, top grade fan made figures. Yep. yep. But there's something really special about getting the old band back together, the original band back together, and every time they like bring back a movie, I hope you know it's going to have the old magic. Sometimes it does, yep. Yep. sometimes it doesn't, but when you really, really love something, you know, from back then and they bring it back, you like unfinished business is, is one of the things I'm always harking on. Like this feels like it should have come out back then. Yeah. Or, you know, the, the line is done. It's finite. It's finished. If only there was one more, like, is there, is there something, did a sculpt fall behind a couch somewhere? Do we have just <laughs> one more, like a lost episode of a TV show that's discovered, right? right? Oh, one right. more lost episode or the lost song by a legendary band. And what you got right there is the last show, which might not be the last show. There might be yeah, more after I that, mean, but, but I as hope it's, that it's not, I hope that it's not, man. I, I really hope that the community sees this and is inspired by what we've done and they get behind us and basically push us up this mountain. And we, I, we've agreed as a unit and I'm, in, I'm including Kurt Bazigian, Ron Rudat, Doug Hart, Ed Morrill, Larry Hama. They've all agreed to it that we will make four as the minimum goal and 16 as the maximum stretch goal. Can you imagine? Oh, amazing. Can you imagine if we got 16 new figures from Please, the guys? From tell the guys. me, tell me oh. it's 16 new battle force, 2000 guys. Cause that <laughs> team is too small. No, <laughs> it will not be. Uh, oh, but I'm glad you mentioned that actually. Oh uh, no, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not no, just no, to no, be no. clear. 
<laughs> because Mark Pennington that followed Ron Rudat on the figure design, he did uh, all the figures from 87 to 89. So a few years worth of figures and some great figures in there. He's agreed to come on board as well. So he's going to share the load of uh, character design duties with Ron Rudat. So. Oh, man, that's awesome. And, and just to show some love to Battle Force 2000, I never knew how awesome they were until I stuck them in the Defiant. And yes. then I went. Yep. Ah, these guys are def drivers. Yep, and you put Countdown That's... in there too. There's a couple other figures, you know, Roadblock from 90, 93, 94. Yeah. There's several. Yeah, you can, you can. The Battle Force 2000 can have a place in yeah. your collection. I'm, I'm so super pumped. Uh, it just there's no missing piece there, other than you know Hector Greedo, which unfortunately is, is yeah. you know, not possible now. But I'm, I'm sure he's yeah. with you in spirit. But absolutely, when you said Larry Homer wrote the the file card, like, oh man, are you kidding me? Really? And that and that was like one of the last pieces in the puzzle to come together too. Um, you know, he had agreed to do it, but Larry's a very busy guy. Uh, he's still, you know, of the entire creative team. He's yeah. the one that, that is still like the most highly utilized, like his, his time is at a premium kind of thing. And so he really came through for me, man. And it's just, it's incredibly humbling. Uh, you know, obviously I've worked on this website for 10 years and I've made a lot of friendships along the way and met a lot of guys, but that doesn't mean necessarily that they're going to want to work with you on anything. You know what I mean? Or with each other. You never know. Right. 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 And so for all of them to say, yeah, this is a cool idea. This is fun. Let's do it. And then when you get done with it, they're like, yeah, we'll do that again. I'm like, you're serious. Oh, Let's do man. it. <laughs> That's cool. And, and the fact that it's your figure that you pitched yeah. that, that didn't get picked then, but right. That's just the cherry on the top. That's awesome that you're getting your figure made after all these years. It is crazy. So one of the things I'm planning, because that was so special for me to have that experience and watch it go from like a dream of a 10 year old to like, here we are 33 years later and we're actually making it. So here's what I'm going to do on the Kickstarter. I'm going to open up a call for submissions and everybody that submitted ideas to Hasbro 30 years ago, they can submit them to operation recall and me, Kirk, Ron, and Mark are going to sit at a table, look at all these concepts. I'm going to black out all the names because we don't want any favoritism, you know, yeah. uh, just because Michael Mercy's a big name. We don't want to select his concept. You know, we want to <laughs> we want to make sure I... that we want to make sure that the create and this is the honest part of that answer. I want to make sure that the creators are inspired to work on the concepts that that we pick. Right. And mm -hmm. so we're going to sit around a round table and pick out, you know, however many uh, characters get funded. If it's four, if it's all the way up to 16, they're going to pick the winners and they're going to go make those figures. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so wicked. It's a crazy idea. I can't oh, believe this is my life. Yeah. Like, it's it's nuts that all of this is happening. It really is, man. It's gone from, like, something I did nights and weekends and just had a ton of fun with to something. It, I'm going to start allowing it to interrupt my day job. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's really just kind of cranking into another gear here. It's crazy. I'm I'm so happy, man. I'm so happy that do you want me to do you want me to show you the card art? You want to see the card art? Let's do it. <laughs> hey, hey Carson, do you have any card yeah. art to show us? I sure do. <laughs> awesome. Uh, it's, it's actually uh Doug Hart. All right, so let me share the screen. All right. So this is a page on 3D Joe's that kind of details the whole process. It's hidden for now, uh, but you can find it just by searching for 3D Joe's Rotello. So spoiler alert. Uh, but it's got the whole submission from when I was a 10-year-old kid. Look at my drawings, man. <laughs> wow, wow. Anyway, uh oh, I even I even told them that awesome. they could reuse Flint's arms because they're the same, and uh <laughs> they can use Beachhead's <laughs> crotch and hawk's legs right so like all you have to do is these new parts here i was really trying to sell them on it but there you see the carrier pigeon the communications backpack the helmet with the heads up display the machine gun and the flare gun so anyway uh this was the pitch after i refined it and sent it to ron rudat in 2020 and then these are ron's original designs and oh, wow, you know, wow backpacks and carrier pigeons all kinds of different ideas and that's where like a robo pigeon came into you know play was it a real pigeon or was it a pigeon with armor or was it's it like a silver hawk a uh, robo pigeon or was it a drone like there was actually a drone right here and so as i went through those designs with kirk and kirk did all this red markup on them that's where we decided you know what let's do let's do a drone in addition to the carrier pigeon, right? So you see where Kirk circled that drone and said, build on this idea. So it was a, a lot of back and forth, you know, kind of iterative designing with these guys. And that was all taking place in 2020. As you can see, the date up there is 2020. Wow. Um, and so then here's Ron's refined line art, his 360 turnaround for Bill Mark line to use as a reference when he was sculpting. Again, that's dated 2020. We've been at this for two years. Uh, here's the uh, accessory engineering drawings. 
Here's the color studies. He did six different color combinations. Of course, Kirk reviewed those, marked them up, and combined a few of them. So we ended up wow. with a seventh color study. So here's the color study for Rotello. And then here's what you would call presentation artwork that they would show to management to try to get approval to move into engineering this figure, to actually spending a lot more time and a lot more money on bringing this thing to life. So then we, uh, I did some research for the file card and then kicked it over to Larry. Larry wrote the file card. Um, then I worked with Adam Freeman to do 3D design on the accessories because Ron's drawings were great, but they were a little loose and we needed to turn that into like a physical product, right? So mm -hmm. pigeons, helmets, guns, removable clip, removable silencer or suppressor. Um, yeah, it's badass, man. So here's, here's the 3D printed accessories. Whoa. Wow. I, I I love that it's about what the mid '80s Joes came with that we're not looking at, um, you know, some of the later years where it was all the pack uh, the card art was covered up by all the accessories. It, yeah, no, we're we're gonna try to avoid that. So you know, obviously, unless Hasbro licenses this, which I would totally be open to. If you're listening, Hasbro, we would love for you to actually they're, they're make not. this under the GI Joe brand. But if they don't, they have no great. idea who I am. They're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so I gave Ed Morrill this packaging mock-up, which showed where the accessories would fall and how much space he would have for the illustration. I gave mm. him an 82 package and a 86 package. Um, and then he created these sketches, right? Oh, man. And we settled on this one. And so then Doug Hart wanted some photo references. Yeah. So, so I went outside with my <laughs> rifle and uh, gave him some poses. And then he wanted close-ups for facial expressions. <laughs> right so there, on. There you go. Uh, it was a ton of fun, man. A ton of fun working with these guys. And again, like this has taken you know two years to do. So it's been fun all along the way. So this is Doug Hart's work as he went from like rough sketch and starts to refine it, refine it more. Yeah. Um, you know, just, just keeping on adding details to it. And then there he started painting it. There was, you know, getting closer to a finished painting. And I was like, you know what? My dad used to wear Vietnam era uh, tiger stripe fatigues. Can we do that on the pants? And can we add the De Oppresso Lee Bear on the belt buckle for the special forces? And so that's how we ended up with those details, oh, right? Oh, cool. So like, I've been able to like inject my dad into this at every turn, which is really cool. You know, we need an American flag on that shoulder, for example. So then he added the American flag, you know what I mean? Um, heads up display, bullets coming out. Uh, muzzle blast added all those little details so that's the final that's the final card art right there Beautiful. wow yeah it's been fun man there it is so, so that's cool that's doug hart then we had this uh buck which is the original uh kind of armature skeleton that they worked from and i documented the whole process of bill Merkline turning this into a fully sculpted figure that's so cool it's been fun, man. There's, there, there's, there he is. There's figures inspired by Real American Hero, and then there's Real American Hero figures, and, and this is a Real American Hero figure. It's so wild. Yeah. I mean, it's it's made by all the same guys. You know, it's got the old band together to play another song. So there's which, the piece that's getting ready to be cast. Which you never see. I mean, with there's so many great fan-made uh, third-party uh, figures out there. Mm-hmm band yep. back together you know they, and, and they might have one or two components mm -hmm. but not the whole team so that's where we're at with it right now we just got the cast made the the resin casts and i'm getting ready to get those painted and so you'll have a paint master which will look let it, it'll approximate what the actual factory product will look like so i'll send one paint master to the factory i'll keep one here for like marketing purposes and we're gonna we're gonna manufacture this thing, man. Are you gonna sneak Rotello into the new um, the omnibus? The the original plan, the reason <laughs> that I did that was to make a chapter in the book. But I feel like this story has grown yeah. beyond. It it's was like a, a tumor that was growing on the side of the book, and and it got as big <laughs> as the book was. And I was like, you know what, we got to get that thing off. And so no, I don't I don't think that Rotello will make an appearance in that because that is. Hasbro, G.I. Joe, yeah, 1982 yeah. to 1994. Absolutely. This, this is flash forward 40 years, and these guys have still got it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's so, really, really amazing, man. Congratulations. Thank I'm, you, I'm dude. really looking forward. That's it's that been, one more Joe, and, and more than one, but that, that's all I can think now is yeah. one more Joe. I love the name. We're definitely. We're definitely one. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, it's a radio teletype operator. So that's why he's Rotello. Yeah. And it's so similar to Rakondo, which yep. Bill also worked on. So it just yep. it fits so perfectly. 
And so, uh, so Larry Hama named the carrier pigeon Homer. So it's Rotello and Homer. <laughs> That's, <perfect. laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. It's been nuts, man. I, I, this project has like, it's been two years of just completely enjoyable fun with these guys. It's, it's really surreal that this is what I get to do with my life for a decent portion of it, you know? And that's fantastic. Thank you, Carson. Thanks for, for everything. Um, you know, from a Joe fan, uh, thank you for the art of GI Joe. Thank you for one more Joe, one more real Joe, authentic Joe and, and more, but one thing at a time, but I'm, I'm super pumped because I've gotten a couple of O-ring figures from those comic packs and the Mm -hmm. uh, club had a couple of them too. I had big lob from the club. Yeah. And when I ordered him, I thought, oh, great. They never made Big Lop. Unfinished business. I sold him because he yeah. just didn't feel like an original Joe. He was the right character, but he just didn't look right. It, it was it was the Mercer. Right. It was the Mercer head sculpt in blackface. I can't do it. I bought that figure. I was happy to have him at first. The more I looked at him, you know, and he was worth like four or five hundred bucks at the time. I was like, this is Mercer and Blackface. Yeah. It's not acceptable. We needed a unique head sculpt. for. I sold him for much less than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's gone up, man. He's gone yeah. up. But, but yeah, no, Big Lob deserved better, for sure. This, but this, I think, he belongs there. He's just been delayed, right. you know, but, but better late than never. Nice. I appreciate it, man. So that'll be coming sooner than later. Um, hopefully we're, you know, this is a two week Kickstarter for the omnibus. Then I'm going to do two weeks of submissions for operation recall for character ideas. And what I would like to do before we launch is have that sit down with Ron Rudak, Kirk Bazicki and Mark Pennington and decide which of the concepts that we're going to potentially carry forward. Just so we have, you know, at the launch of the Kickstarter, here's some of the other things we want to make. Now mm-hmm. you guys, you guys get behind us and push us up this hill. That's awesome. So the card will actually say Operation Recall on it. That's yeah. The the I've already got the branding. That's the one thing I haven't shown you yet. But I've been working with Sean Morrill <laughs> and Ed Morrill. Uh, Sean Morrill is Ed Morrill's son, and they've done all the packaging packaging design for me. They also did the logo design for the Operation, or excuse me, the Omnibus hardcover that I just rolled out on the Kickstarter. So that that new branding came from Sean Morrill. Perfect timing with Hasbro reissuing some of the O-rings as well. I know. I know. Back. We've been doing this for two years because we wanted it to happen. And now Hasbro is doing it. And it's like, that's amazing. I mean, these products are absolutely compatible and you know, Synergy. Ra- raising all the ships, you know. So yeah. at the same time, it's an O-ring resurgence. And I think, honestly, the community is going to be hungry for some new O-ring concepts. Because Hasbro is going to have us covered with the reissues and the repaints and that kind of thing. But I don't know if they're going to do brand new character design in o-ring form we'll see i don't know what you, they have planned. you, you gotta wonder if because they have so many parts to choose from if they'll just yeah it's a new figure and, and you paint it different and you give some different accessories you match them differently or even come up with new vests and backpacks mm-hmm. but it just doesn't have the team it doesn't have the creative team behind it which well, uh, <laughs> nothing against the guys working on the stuff now lenny is doing some amazing work on the classified stuff and, and everyone there is doing great but but for real American hero O-ring authentic Joes, I mean, it's it's these guys. You need a team. You need it's the, like, you need a team. You need it's the like team. The end of uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. You know, it it would have been fine if you brought in Steve Martin and uh, you know some of the other legendary comedians, Eddie Murphy, but they're not the original team. Well, uh, if you want to throw out where people can back this stuff, I, I'll but, tell you, man. I what. What is really amazing to me is the head count on this Kickstarter right now. So even if you can't throw $100 at a hardcover, which I understand a lot of people can't, if you could get on there and throw a dollar at it just to add another person to it, I want to show that there's thousands of people out there that love G.I. Joe, that want G.I. Joe, that kind of thing. So, you know, and then you'll get all the updates as well. So you can kind of follow along with the progress and that kind of thing. Maybe that'll be fun for you. Uh, But definitely go check out 3djoes.com. Keep an eye on our social media channels because when we publish new pre-production pages, that's where we're promoting where to find the new content. Because I don't expect everybody to know every page that's on 3D Joe's at any given moment. It's overwhelming, right? So what you can do is follow our social media. And then when new stuff goes live, we'll certainly be promoting it on there. And just get in there and enjoy it. You know, it's free and it's ad free and it's all there for you. And it's, you know, it's because of people like Joe Declassified that we're able to share that kind of stuff with you guys going forward. So get in there and enjoy it. Give Joe Declassified some props, you know, 
Um, check out the Kickstarter if you can back it, the Art of G.I. Joe. I guarantee it's going to be worth it. We're going to be adding a lot of free extras to it here in a little bit. And keep your eyes peeled for Operation Recall because we're going to need everybody to sign up for Operation Recall. Yes. And ev every dollar raised on Operation Recall is going to these creators to develop IP. That's so, awesome, man. It's, yep, it's not yep. just getting a cool, I'm authentic, in. original uh, style G.I. Joe. It's actually a, a thank the original creators. And having spoken to a couple of the, you know, the original guys, sometimes they go, well, it was a job. You know, it was a, appreciated. Thank you. But it was also a job. It's like it was a job that you didn't actually have to put that much passion and creativity and love into. I mean, and, and you know, sometimes creators don't put that much passion, love and create. And it, it just kind of is cool and it fades away. And But sometimes when they just go all out, it it lasts forever. It's just as uh, powerful 30, 40 years later. So this is an opportunity to tell them, hey, man, we, we really, really appreciate what you did. And yeah. so much so that make some more because yeah. we're going to love it too. Do it Do again. Do it again. Do it again. It's I My general feeling in talking to these guys, and this is all but saved maybe one of them, they realized that they were part of something special on this and that it was lightning in a bottle and the stars aligned. And, you know, yeah. it, it was the package art of Garrido. It was the figure design of Rudat and Pennington. It was the, uh, the, the branding prowess of Ed Morrill and the company, you know, the package paintings of Garrido and Doug Hart, all that stuff added together to, to really make something magical that we all still love and remember today. So if we can put those guys back to work, man, give them one more year freaking make 16 figures if we can how incredible would that be you yeah know? you need to make a figure of jay with his pup that, we need to sidekick. <laughs> i have ideas but i don't want any more of my ideas to go in i'm gonna i'm gonna submit mine carson um, yep. but yeah make sure you don't do any favoritism wink wink <laughs> Liam. right, right? No, so um, I, hope, I hope you guys submit some ideas too man like swing, swing oh, for the fences i mean i'm i'm happy to just sit by and and watch from a distance and enjoy so i i i i don't have any ideas from you know sending them into hasbro like like you did yep i had uh i filled out the iron or what was it the uh steel brigade yep. mail away i filled that i don't even remember what my code name was and when the figure came i was like I thought this was going to look like me. And <laughs> nope. you get a file card. What, kid. what is this? And it wasn't even a it's real a file card. card, like on the back of a file. Right. Like, uh, uh, right. It, it was, was like it a was whole a page. Yeah. It was a printout. I like I to, know. I think mine, my guy was a flamethrower and they sent me Airborne's machine gun. I was like, what is this going This doesn't on here? work. Yeah. This isn't going to burn anything. Yeah. 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 Yeah, man. That's awesome. Again, thank you so much for everything My you pleasure, do man. for, for I'm, Joe. I'm fans. always happy. Always happy to come on and talk with you guys, man. You guys are good people and I appreciate everything you do for the community. So keep up your good work. Appreciate that. Both, All right. Both. Very much so. And uh, appreciate it. And Jay, uh, everyone check out Action Figure Adventure on Amazon Prime Video. Jay and his friend Rob uh, going around toy hunting different stores around Canada and the U.S. all for an amazing cause to raise money for children's charity amazing show if you've seen mark hamill's pop culture quest it's it's just like that um it's so much fun and uh jay is just oh, one of the best wow. guys out there it's an honor to call you guys my friends and uh thank you michael for inviting me uh to join on this joe goodness i was literally i was just my mouth was open the whole time in awe so yeah. thank you <laughs> awesome man this the, my my jaw didn't hit the ground this hard uh since uh i saw the 25th anniversary figures hanging on pegs which i nice. i didn't know were coming out i didn't know where they're coming out. i walked into oh, toys wow. r us and i was like you know that was actually the same exact experience i had i wasn't like i wasn't in tune with the community back in 2006 2007 and i just walked into a target and actually it might have been 2008 and i saw the big battle in a box with the mobat and the hiss tank and i think like stalker on a jet packer would have a trouble bubble on the other side it's like yeah. holy sh they still make gi joe i still love it <laughs> and it was like game <laughs> over man i literally went to my parents house the next weekend and got my old collection out of storage that had been in storage since i was 11 years old you know what i mean wow yeah. just like reignited the passion so that's awesome to hear you say that i appreciate that yeah and i have a feeling Rotello hanging off of a peg off of the, the uh the pegboard wall same thing it's gonna have a very special spot right Can't next wait. to chuck norris in my collection probably nice. <laughs> the chuck norris gi joe that's the next thing man that's the next thing is to see this packaging printed up and to have that figure on a bubble 
that might be that might be my recommend my anonymous recommendation is Chuck Norris for yeah. Operation Recall. <laughs> right, we can't call him that because of licensing issues, but somebody like Nuck, Chuck Norris. <laughs> Nuck Chorus. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be really fun to see what everybody else came up with when they were kids. Because when you're kids, you just come up with innocent, silly stuff. You know, teletype operator with a carrier pigeon. It's great. Man, even it. even if they don't get made, I mean, that's going to be fun to just see them if if they ever get shared. Uh, you yep. know, oh, an they opportunity will. They for will. creativity. They will because I'm filming it, and Beautiful. we'll be making we'll be making a documentary out of it. As yeah, well, so it's not a loss. It's not an L. You know, right. if if your figure doesn't get made, you still did something creative, which is what this stuff is is meant to do. It's not just there to enjoy it. It's meant to inspire creativity and yeah. make your own Joe. Even if you never, I used to make my own Joes Joes out of plasticine. When I was a kid all the time and any other wow. toy that they never made, you know, we didn't have much money. So I just, I made these toys and I made Optimus Prime out of plasticine and Grandizer and all that oh, stuff. Cool. So awesome. Yeah. It's important to uh, not just be a consumer, but to be a creator as well. So it's a great opportunity to create some new Joes yourself. And so many people do that, man. If it's, if it's customs or if it's costuming or if it's illustration or if it's blogging or if it's YouTube storytelling, uh, there's so many different creative outlets in this hobby. And just like find your lane and get in it and have fun with it, man. You know, so toy photography Amen. is a huge one. Yeah. So. Some cosplayers out there, maybe if they don't have any uh, drawing skills, they can just cosplay together a costume and say, hey, this is my character. Like, here I am in the flesh. Yep. I can come to conventions and sign autographs if you right. make, make a figure out of me. We can make some really bad live action 90s style commercials, you know? Yeah. All right, man, this has been fun. We'll chat a little bit more when we go off here, but hope everyone out there has enjoyed this chat. Uh, Carson and Jay will be back again soon to talk about some more cool stuff. Yeah. Carson, thanks for all the scoops. Kickstarter, check it out. Links are all in the show notes. Check out 3D Joe's on uh, Twitter. You're on Facebook too, I believe, mm -hmm. Instagram. Instagram, YouTube. Yep. YouTube, check the channel out. Jay's got it, his own channel. Check out the links as well as Instagram. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Take care. Yo, Joe! Yo, Joe!